Hi everyone, Kate is here and I'm really happy to see you once again in the series of Jet Engine REST API tutorials. From the previous videos, you already learned how to use custom GET and create item endpoints for CCT, and I really hope that it kind of helped you to get along with this cool functionality. And today, I'd like to take a closer look at another really cool option that Jet Engine has to offer. Register Update Item REST API Endpoint for Custom Content Types. So if you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell to receive notifications about new interesting tutorials. So guys, shall we get started? So right here I have the main website with CCT functionality enabled. Over here is the custom content type named attendees that stands for collecting the information of people who decided to attend the event presented on another website. And as you already know, it collects the info thanks to the REST API functionality. Here's the second website that provides photography tour service in this case to Dolomites, Italy. So basically, if a user clicks on this button, he'll have a possibility to submit his request to join the tour group, and the information he enters in the form will automatically appear on the first website in the list of attendees. And this works thanks to the custom Create Item REST API Endpoint feature. Also, if we scroll a bit down, we'll see a listing grid with the information on who has already joined the tour group, which is displayed thanks to the custom Get Item REST API Endpoint feature. So the idea is to add the possibility of editing the information of people who are already on this list. And for this purpose, we'll need to do the following. Register Update Item REST API Endpoint for Attendees CCT on the main website. Check REST API Endpoint Settings on the second website. Create Added Attendee Form on the second website. Add Added Attendee Form to the pop-up again on the second website. Attach Added Attendee pop-up to the listing item and added existing attendee information via the form and REST API request. So, let's start with the first step. Follow to Jet Engine, Custom Content Types, open Attendee CCT and scroll a bit down. As you can see, here we have two REST API endpoints enabled already, one for getting and another one for creating CCT items. So we did cover both of these options in the previous videos, and if you want to learn more about them, you know what to do. Jet Engine REST API playlist is right here at your service. Ok, so right now let's concentrate on the register update item REST API endpoint. Once the toggle is enabled, we get access to the endpoint URL and access capability settings. So the URL here is a bit different from what we've seen before, right? It's got this little ID part that can and actually needs to be replaced by the actual ID of a specific item or ID macro, which is more convenient to use in my humble opinion. And as for the access capability field, you already know that here's the place where you can define the capability, in this case to update the CCT items according to specific user roles. I'll leave this one just as it is, as it works fine for me, but over here you can find a really comprehensive article on different types of WordPress user roles and their capabilities for your convenience. Ok, so let's update the content type and proceed to the second website. Here's the second website with the photography tours. 
most of our today's setting up and editing will take place over here. So, our second step would be to check whether the REST API endpoint is set up correctly or create one if you haven't done so yet. So I'm not going to create a new endpoint to save your time as you already know how to do it from the previous videos. I'll just proceed to the Jet Engine dashboard and open REST API endpoint section to see if everything is working fine. Here's my attendees endpoint. Let's expand its settings and see what do they look like. So the name of the endpoint attendees, same as the CCT, but you can pick any name you like. API endpoint URL matches the URL for getting items from the main website. Items path is set to slash as I have no nested items, thus no separate folders where different categories of items are stored. Authorization is enabled and set to application password type. User and password string are entered properly and the endpoint itself is connected and working fine. Let's try to resend the request. Okay, we're all set. One more time, guys, if you need help with creating an endpoint, please don't hesitate to watch previous videos from this series. And if you encounter any problems, contact our support team so they could assist you right away. Now we are ready to move to the third step. Since the endpoint settings are OK, now we can proceed with creating a form for editing the existing information of our attendees. I can tell you straight away that it will look almost the same as the inquire form. That is why let's take a look at its field settings. Here we have text fields for first name and last name, media field for photo, select field for occupation, another couple of text fields for phone number and email, text area for message, and a submit button field. In the post submit actions, of course, we have the REST API request type selected and set up with a proper REST API URL, custom body and authorization enabled. So let's go back to our forms list. And just for your information, guys, over here, you have an opportunity to duplicate forms. It's extremely useful if you need to have multiple forms with somewhat similar fields, and I can say for sure that it is a great time saver that makes your life much easier. So let's duplicate this form and add it its settings. First, I'll rename the form. Good. So we surely need all of these fields because this is the information that we want our users to add it if needed. But how will the form actually understand what exact CCT item needs to be added? For this purpose, we need to add another form field for the CCT item ID. So let's click on the add field button, drag it to the top and click on added field. So field value text, field type text as well, field name ID, field label item ID, no description is needed, field is required, and that's pretty much it. Since the form is for editing the information, let's also change the label of the button field, okay? So I'll change it to save. Good. Now let's scroll a bit down to customize post submit action settings. So the type of the action will stay the same, REST API request, but the URL here needs to be slightly changed. We need to add the macro right after the slash. And what macro will it be? <laughs> of course, the ID one. So basically, this will give us the opportunity to update the information of the exact CCT item, the ID of which the user will enter in this ID field. A 
As for the custom body, it will stay exactly the same as these field macros totally correspond with these meta field names. So let's apply the changes and update the form. The form is all set up and ready, which means that now we can add it to the pop-up. Let's follow to Jet pop-up, click on Create a new pop-up and click Create pop-up button. I will remove all the widgets except for the heading and change its title to Added Information. Align it to the center and change typography settings to Rafina size 27 pixels, weight 500, and color settings to grayish black. Now I'll search for the form widget and drop it onto the canvas. Type in the name of the form we just created, select it, and change submit type to HX. As for the style settings, I'll change the row labels typography to Leto, size 18 pixels, and same grayish black color. As for the fields typography, I'll go for the same Leto font, size 16 pixels, good, and also change the text area height to 90. Now I'll change the required mark color to kind of dark red and change the submit button background color to grayish black on normal and green on hover. As well as set typography settings to Leto, size 18 pixels, weight 500 and change the alignment to full width. Ok, now we can open the pop-up settings, leave animation type on fade, enable loading content with Ajax and toggle force loading option on. Proceed to the jet pop-up style settings and change the close button font color to white and background color to grayish black on normal and on hover font color will stay the same, white, and background color will be green. Good. Now we can save the changes and attach this pop-up to a specific widget. I already have a listing item that displays the information about attendees on the front end. So let's follow to Jet Engine, Listings, and open attendees listing item. Here I have a simple listing with a couple of dynamic widgets such as dynamic fields and dynamic image, as well as icon list widget with dynamic text functionality enabled. At the top I have a two column section with the CCT item ID on the left that is being displayed with the help of dynamic field widget and on the right, I'd like to add a button widget and then attach a pop-up with the added attendee form to it. So let's drag the button widget right into this column, change the text to add it, align it to the right and change the size to extra small. In the style settings, change typography to Leto, size 16 pixels, weight 500 and apply the underlying decoration. As for the text color, I'll make it grayish black on normal and green on hover. And also I'll remove the background color at all. And here goes the most interesting part. Open advanced settings tab and follow to jet pop-up section. Here, enter the name of the pop-up you'd like to attach, the one we just created, and leave the trigger type, click on widget. 
So basically, when the user clicks on this edit button, the pop-up will appear right away. Okay, so let's update the listing item and proceed to the front end. Here we are at the Dolomites Photography Tour page on the second website. So let's scroll down to our attendees section. Here we can see that 8 people have inquired to join the tour group already. We see the same number of CCT items over here on the main website too. Ok, so let's try to change the information of Jake White for example. So once I click on the added button, our newly created added attendee form appears in the pop-up. So just give me a second to quickly change the information and submit this form, ok? There we go, so let's click on the Save button. Good, the form has been successfully submitted and let's refresh the page. Wonderful, the info has been successfully updated as we can see, right? And right now let's check our main website to see whether the info has been updated there too. Ok, so let's refresh the page. So our videographer Jake White has been successfully changed to photographer Alex Smith. Ok guys, so that's pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope it was useful and informative for your new projects. If you still have any questions, go ahead and leave them right in the comments below this video or contact our support team so they could assist you. Please share your wonderful ideas with us on our GitHub page and join our friendly Facebook community. Cheers, guys!